man. I did not only steal it, I do now. He is rich to be sure. He may have more finer clothes and finer carriages than Jane. But will he make you happy? <coughs> have you any other objection in your belief of my integrity? None at all. We all know him to be a proud and pleasant sort of man. But this would be nothing if you really liked him. I do. I do like him. Indeed, he has no equal to pride. We do not know as he really is. Bridget, I advise you to think better on him. Let me not have the grief of seeing you unable to respect your partner in life. Papa, I desire no one more than Mrs. Arthur. I love him. Tis he who made it possible for Mr. Whitman to agree to marry Lydia. Made it possible? He did not wish the union, but as he held our aunt's garden, he held it. There is no one I could love more dearly. I, I see. If this be the case, he deserves you. My dear child. I give my consent. I could not have parted with you, my Lily, to anyone that you are. She is yours. You are a most fortunate young man. <laughs> <laughs> if any more young men should come for Mary or Kitty, send them in to me, for I am quite at my leisure. <laughs> <laughs> How did you begin to fall in love with me? Well, I cannot fix the hour, or, or the spot, or the look, or the words. I was in the middle before I knew I had begun. Did you admire me for my integrity? For your liveliness of mind, I did. <laughs> you knew no actual good of me. But nobody thinks of that when they fall in love. Is there no good in your affectionate behavior to your sister when she was ill at Netherfield? Dearest Jane, who could have done less for her? If I'd make a virtue of it by all means, my good qualities are under your protection. You are to exaggerate that as much as possible. And in return, it belongs to me to find a 